comics are, you know, your job is to kind of take the everyday, take the now, take, take this, maybe the sadness of the world, take the tragedies and, and put some kind of spin on it and make it more digestible by interjecting humor into it. But with cancel culture being so rife these days and people getting so easily offended by anything that anybody says, like, do you find that you're more afraid of the things that you see on stage now than you were like maybe like two, three, four years ago? I feel less afraid now than I did a few years ago because I think canceling is actually really good for any creative person or any performer of any kind. Like the more a group of people will try to cancel you, like the stronger it makes you because you realize like, <gasps> like it, it sucks when it happens. You're like, oh my God, you get into a panic. You're like, is it something I said or a thing or an episode or whatever? It's like we, the whole comedy community watched Shane Gillis. He was, you know, in the period of like 48 hours, he went from like this, semi i mean very known among comics but to the general public very unknown stand-up comic to you know now he got hired for snl up and then but now somebody you know almost as if they were waiting for him to blow up kind of submitted oh well here's a podcast where he says the word chink and then now he's fired from snl famously right and that's a that's a big example of being canceled but now like shane is doing really well and people people know him even more so and you could say he's getting more gigs because of it. Um, that's just like an extreme example, but it happens to comics a lot. Like even, even ones that are pretty PC. Um, mm -hmm. But I find like each time that happens to me, like it just makes me stronger. Like this was a couple of years ago. Like I went to Utica. I was like buzzed with my boyfriend. I did like a little video, like called Chrissy's shitty tour of Utica. And I'm just like making fun of like really not, not even scripted. I'm like, Oh, look at this bartender she's probably uh also a stripper like not even funny or witty things and i just was like it's it was just making fun of utica uh, they were like buildings that were like falling down there was a building that wasn't quite built up and it had like standing water and i'm like look at this outdoor pool like really i never ex this was like many years ago before uh like i never expected it to be anything it was like a throwaway little sketch and then like the local Utica radio station picked it up a couple months later and and blew it up and then all of a sudden I see like people in all my DMs and messages like people from Utica and I think I was saying like oh in Utica I'm a 10 in New York City I'm like a two and then oh this insane backlash because of this local radio station found it people from Utica it was a good six weeks of people like you suck you're a one even in Utica like we don't all do meth you know but then people privately in my dms would be like no meth really is a big problem up here and you're right and, <laughs> and I don't even know that. where that is it's upstate New York it's basically okay. New York's Detroit which I said okay. in the video and uh not wrong and I was like at first when you see like you sometimes tens, hundreds, sometimes it's thousands. I don't know if it's been in thousands yet for me, but um, when you have people blowing up all of your messages and commenting on all your social media, you panic. You're like, oh my God, what do I do? And you you eventually realize like, okay, just like it's going to pass. Like people are will be on to the next thing that pisses them off like the next week, you know? Yeah, luckily there's so many things in the world for people to be angry about yeah. and people's attention spans are generally pretty short. They'll, they'll eventually move on to something else. And I was like, all right, cool. And then it becomes almost like, like a badge, you know, a badge of honor. And then over the quarantine, like, um, remember there was like a celebrity video, each line, each line of the song Imagine was oh sung by a different God. celebrity. Yes. Yeah. I was like, like Gal Gadot. Yeah. I was like, they're so out of touch. This is so stupid. So, so bad. I got together with my comedian friends and we each sang a line of Kung Fu fighting. And I was like, it, cause at the time, like Kung Flu was a trending hashtag. And I was like, all right, you can say, you can say Kung Flu if you want, but we're just singing a, each of us a line of the song Kung Fu fighting. And I'm going to cut it together like gals and it'll be like a parody. Um, so I put that out there. I had the whole like woke Asian community after me for like, again, another like month, two months or whatever people and again blowing you up uh everyone's tagging oprah ellen chrissy teigen cancel this girl she's terrible people thought i wrote kung fu fighting people thought i wrote that song i wrote the lyrics um just you realize how many people are just so dumb i was like that's a song from the 70s like i didn't invent i didn't even invent the hashtag kung flu like it, it's all a joke it's tongue-in-cheek um people really came after me and it took like a good month, but it was eventually removed from my Instagram for hate speech, which blows my mind because like, 
it's not a hate speech. It's a spoof. It's a parody. And it's like, it's really sad when people can't tell the difference. They just, their anger is so misplaced. And uh, mm-hmm. I think people get off on it because they like to feel, people like to feel moral, morally superior. Like they, they'd rather feel right than address their shit, right? Than address their right. issues and their triggers. And, uh, you know, not like I've ever been, I've tried, I've never tried to be like intentionally pushing somebody's button. It's like, I do what I think is funny and what I think other people will think is funny. And, you know, it's coming from a good place, but it's definitely, it's caught me off guard. Like the things that people that I've had like backlash over were things I didn't expect. Um, but you, you learn a lot from it and it makes you a stronger person. And as a comedian, the most important thing is to just never apologize for any joke, any sketch video. Like, I just think it's, it's the wrong move to make because it ends up never being enough for these people. Like they want to see you jobless, homeless, never, never working again. So, and once you like give an inch as far as an apology goes, like it's just, it never ends. So that's, I think the most important thing to remember any creator of any kind, you know, if you get shit for your art, like don't apologize for it. Like, you know, if you created it from a good place or, you know, it's, it's hard because you can feel that pressure and I understand why people do apologize, but it's, uh, it's not good. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, make sure that you subscribe so you don't miss a single episode and go check out all the other videos. I film every single one of my podcasts. And if you want to listen to the audio version, I'm on iTunes and all the other podcast platforms. Visit hollyrandallunfiltered.com to find out more.